Marshals, Marshals, Chief Service Operations Officer and Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina, breast cancer survivor Lisa Cade, and Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina breast cancer survivors Kimberly Lunsford and E. Reese. Drivers! Scott Young and The engines are fired up, and during pre race ceremonies, when they sing the national anthem, there's normally fireworks involved. When they go up, you would expect them to burn out before they come back down. Expect, or except in that instance right there, Austin Dillon, it landed right behind him. Close call. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by AutoZone. From parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone. And by X1 from Xfinity. will change the way you experience TV. Drama is building here. You are going into the wall so hard. Teammates getting together. Chris Buescher passing Bubba Wallace. Chris Buescher picks up the win at Dover. Bush passes Brian Blaney, and Kyle Bush is going to win at Indianapolis. Great driving, bud. Elliott just made mincemeat out of that pack of traffic. Yes, Chase Elliott keeps himself in contention yes. and wins in Richmond. Jones running second. He bobbles. Keslowski will win at Kentucky. Go, Regan Smith wins the high sense 200 at Dover. Awesome, awesome, awesome race car. Dover. Yeah. Regan Smith is back in the game. And welcome back to NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Charlotte, presented by AutoZone. A gorgeous night for racing under the lights. We'll take a look at starting grid. Brought to you by AutoZone. Row number one, Austin Dillon, Casey Kane. Austin Dillon, four career wins from the pole, including here back in May. Row two is made up with 19-year-old Eric Jones alongside 22-year-old points leader Chris Buescher. Row three is Kyle Busch, an eight-time winner here, and Brian Scott looking for his first Xfinity Series win. Row four has Daniel Suarez and Ty Dillon. Dillon really needs a rebound race after his 28th place finish from last week. Row five, Darrell Walls Jr. and Elliott Sadler. Darrell Walls Jr. has scored the most points of anyone on this type of track this season. Row six is Ryan Reed with a good qualifying effort, and Regan Smith, who won last week. 
And back in row seven, you've got Ryan Sieg and Brad Keselowski, one of the guys running for the chase in the Sprint Cup Series, three-time winner here. Row eight, Brendan Gong and Ryan Truex. Row nine, we have Chase Elliott, last year's Xfinity Series champion, and Dakota Armstrong. Back in row 10, Ross Chastain and Landon Castle, two JD Motorsports teammates in that row. Have an opportunity to chat with one of the Xfinity Series regulars, Daryl Wallace Jr. Let's try to get him on the radio, Jeff. Hey, Bubba, it's the NBCSM booth. You with us? Hey, yeah, man, I got you. All right, man, you finished in the top 10 in the last seven races on mile and a half racetracks. That's the longest active streak. Tell us what makes you and your team so good on mile and a half. Uh, I think not even knowing that stat makes this good. So uh, it's, it's a, you know just just a blessing to be with such a great team, and and uh, they always prepare fast race cars for us. We're knocking on the door for our first win, so I know it's right around the corner, and uh, I think it's right around the corner tonight. So really got a good feeling here for the homecoming track. Okay, but we'll all be watching. Good luck to you and your team. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And leading the field tonight is the 2016 Toyota Camry. XSE. That's the official pace car of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Always good to see the light shining off of these cars. We'll ride along with a few different drivers tonight. One of those being 42 of Brennan Poole. He has the DC Solar in-car camera on board with him tonight. Darrell Wallace Jr. just heard from him. He'll start ninth tonight with the Xfinity on board. Kyle Busch in the 54. Eight wins already in the Xfinity Series. He has the Toyota in-car camera. And Chris Busher, Xfinity Series points leader with the Ford in-car camera, will start fourth. Beautiful pictures from our aerial coverage, which is provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. Two by two. Cars making their way around this mile and a half track. We look at the track facts, mile and a half. Corners banked at 24 degrees, the straight's just five degrees. Front stretch, 1,980 feet. The back stretch is 1,500 feet. As we take a look at our race facts, this one is a 200 lap, 300 mile race, 45 miles per hour is pit road speed. Fuel window between 57 and 60 laps. Already, the 33 using a little strategy as far as where they're going to start this race. Here's what they had to say on the radio. I'm thinking the top, but you do what you want to do here. We have all the information we have and not know where I started and we won the race on both of them. Oh, did you watch the race this week? Every time I checked, I won it. I just want to know where I start. B on the last one had to drive back by him. Just uh, whatever you think. <laughs> well, how about that confusion already, Marty? Well, they chose on the outside, obviously, and we saw the pre-race fireworks literally for Austin Dillon a moment ago. I did check with him, and here's the replay of what happened. The fireworks from the pre-race literally landed on his backside right on the car, and it burnt the back of Austin's fire suit. I checked with him after that. He said he's fine, but again, the fire suit is discolored and burnt the back of his fire suit. So close call there for Austin Dillon. Good thing it didn't land on his head. Absolutely. Chris Busher getting ready for the start of this one. Here was the pep talk on the radio. All right, guys. Have another solid night here tonight. We've we'll, uh, got a fast car. Looks good. Uh, Let's go out and have some fun. Get ourselves a good finish here. Get a good finish. It wasn't go out and win this race. It wasn't try to race over our heads. It was get a good finish. Sounds like he's got his head on straight as he has the championship in sight. Just five races to go. 24 point lead as we get ready for the green flag. Get on the inside, Casey Kane out of the 88. The outside chosen by Austin Dillon. They work their way through the quad oval here. Charlotte Motor Speedway. Green flag in the air. We're racing Friday night at Charlotte.
the battle still for second. Austin Dillon out front. Chris Busher, Casey Kane fighting for that second spot. Kane's going to have the advantage as they go through one and two. And the guy that's coming is Chase Elliott on the outside. He's made it three wide. He started back in 17th. He's already up. He's already up to about eighth place. So he is digging on the outside, trying to make up some ground. One lap, he made up nine spots. Chase Elliott using that high line and making it work. We know what his idea is, how he's trying to win the championship. He feels like he's got to win races. You can see right now the attitude right from the start of the green flag. Go make it three wide, pick up spots. He is digging. Yeah, plus 12. He's gained 12 positions in two laps. Now the inside trying that lower line. 20 of Eric Jones trying to get by Kyle Busch in the 54. Bush with the momentum able to clear Eric Jones and now trying to use that momentum to get by Chase Elliott. Some tracks guys are just really good and this is one of those tracks for the 54 of Kyle Busch. He tries to reel in the two of Ryan Scott that's just in front of him as we see Eric Jones now moving by Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott made that big move early, gained a bunch of spots, has lost a couple on this last lap. It'll be interesting to see, is it just strength on new tires or is it just maybe a couple laps that was off and he had to settle in? Different lines being run already early in this race. Only on lap five. And here comes Casey Kane. Kane looks to the inside. Austin Dillon on the outside trying to hang on to the lead. As they come out of four, momentum. Austin Dillon keeps him in front for that lap, but Kane definitely looking strong on the inside. Through one and two, just going to be able to clear it. And Kane, new leader at Charlotte. We mentioned at the top of the show about the points battle. Well, Chris Bush has found him a really nice place third place right behind these two leaders a little pocket to run in nobody really pressuring from behind no real resistance from the front just kind of when you talk about defending your points position this is a great place to do a run towards the top of the pack run, stay out of traffic run your own race Xfinity points will run underneath the names the running order Chris Busher has a 28 point lead over Chase Elliott as they run we see Eric Jones getting by Brian Scott and the spark's still flying, tire pressure still coming up. Yeah, Rick, it's still early in the run, only seven laps into it. We'll see that go away. The bigger concern would be that I would expect this track to pick up speed as, this, as it continues to cool. So if this comes down to a short run, whatever is sparking on the 54 perhaps might hold him back later if it comes down to a two or three lap shootout on new tires. As a crew chief, do you ever worry about when you see all the sparking that you're wearing a part away, something's going to break. Well, at, point, at this point in the weekend, you would hope to know what is dragging on the 54. At practice, it gets a little unnerving when you see sparks the first time. You call your driver in, you'll look at it, see what it is. But at this point, especially that area on the 54 being on the right side, I expect it to be either maybe a bracket you see right there as they shoot out from behind the car, either a bracket holding the tailpipes, the jack post, or perhaps even the uh, right side track bar mount could be low enough if they ran soft enough rear springs. We saw moments ago the aid of Blake Cook came on to pit road, had an issue. So Blake Cook on pit road. The 88, though, trying to check out on the field at eight tenth of a second lead over Austin Dillon.
Watch a live stream of every Xfinity Series race with NBC Sports Live Extra available on your laptop, tablet, smartphone, and connected TVs. NBC Sports Live Extra it brings you closer to every race. Out front, Casey Kane. He has led 10 of the 15 laps. Let's go to Mike Massaro. You know, Rick, talking with his crew chief, Dave Ellens, earlier today, uh, you got a sense that there was a bit of concern because each of the last few times that Casey's been in this car, they've had a problem with corner entry. So, as you might imagine, that had been the objective as they went through practice throughout the course of the weekend, trying to get the corner entry just right for Casey. So far, no complaints whatsoever. He's pretty happy with the race car, and why not? He's out in clean air, and it feels pretty good. Marty? Mike, from the majority of the drivers hearing kind of the same thing, tight from the center of the middle of the corner off, and that's exactly what's going on with Eric Jones right now. You know, when I asked Mike Wheeler, his crew chief earlier today, what has been his strength so far this year, he said, I feel like he's really adapted these mile and a half so well. For some reason, he just picked up on them rather quickly. Evidenced by that, his wins earlier this year at Texas and Chicago. He would love to add one here at Charlotte tonight. Dave? Elliot Sadler runs eighth. That's up two spots from where he started, Marty. And he announced last Friday that he'd be moving to Junior Motorsports. I talked to Phil Gould, his crew chief, today. I said he knew that was coming, right? He said, yeah. And so since then, we've been in full experimentation mode with the setups on this car. That was in practice, though. And when it didn't work, they went back to something standard. Right now, Elliot calls his car pretty good in standard form. Kelly? Brad Kozlowski in the 22 car qualified 13th. He opted not to try a second qualifying attempt in round two because he felt like the best they could do was finish 12th, even if they advanced to the third round. They've been struggling to find more front turn all week, and they've been looking over their notes from May when Ryan Blaney run, ran this car. Even back to last fall right now, Brad Kozlowski saying he's loose into turn one and a little tight in one and two. Casey Kane now has a three second lead over Kyle Bush who's made his way up to second in front of Austin Dillon Eric Jones Chris Busher has dropped back to fifth. Take a look at this pass by Kyle Bush. Yeah, Kyle had been running the outside and they drove into one and Austin decided he was going to run the outside. It got Austin pretty loose getting in the corner with Kyle right behind him and Kyle was able to just turn left get get the position and he beat him down into turn three. So Kyle had been gaining a little bit of ground by using the high line and also decided to block him, but it just didn't work. Eric Jones also getting by 33. Austin Dillon. Eric Jones, a native of Byron, Michigan. Jones was found by Kyle Bush. They raced together. Eric Jones was able to outrun Kyle Bush in a late model race and Kyle Bush thought you know what there's a lot of talent for that driver I'm going to sign him up and so Kyle Bush signed him Kyle Bush Motorsports and now he has moved on to drive for Joe Gibbs Racing. Hey Rick one thing I'm noticing the left rear tire on the 33 of Austin Dillon has no Goodyear riding back on it and you see right here contact a couple times between the 54 of Kyle Bush and the 33 of Dillon. You have to watch that left rear tire. We've seen before where that left rear tire could lose air quickly and get up into the fence. Another car into the fence. Ryan Reed up into the wall. Ryan Reed in the 16 into the wall. We've seen this before where a left rear tire can go down. Saw it with Kevin Harvick in the cup race back at Chicagoland after a similar situation where the exhaust, the pipes on the exhaust of the car actually hit the tire. Yeah, that's the concern. You know, the exhaust is on the right side, right in front of the right rear tire. That's right about where the left rear tire of Austin Dillon made contact with the 54 of Kyle Busch. So, you know, the problem is you say, well, there's still air in it. It's fine. But if there's a small cut, the left rear will continue to lose air until finally it'll be low enough on air that it can't sustain the load anymore and the tire will come apart. It's pretty interesting to, to be hitting each other on the straightaway. I mean, you know, you you can see guys in the corner, they get together, but right here you see Kyle, he moves up the racetrack, but I think he assumes that the 33 is going to be out by the wall, but the 33 is giving a bit of a gap. So I think the 54 was going to try to side draft the 33 to slow him down and just expected the 33 to be outside against the wall, and he wasn't. So it's not normal to see guys running at each other in the straightaway. Marty? 
And Jeff, so far, Austin has not mentioned a word about a tire rub or anything that might be affecting him. What we're hearing from a lot of drivers, they started out tight, but the track is coming to him, that, to them. That is not the case for Austin Dillon. He said it's tight and getting tighter the longer this run goes. So that perhaps explains why he's falling back. But so far, from the seat in the car, no complaints about that left rear. And Austin Dillon started on the pole and has since fallen to fourth. So Casey Kane out front. The gap, though, has closed. Kyle Busch just 2.3 seconds back. Welcome back to Race for the Cure 300, NASCAR Mobile. Best way to follow your favorite drivers, build your own leaderboards, listen to driver in-car audio, and watch live in-car cameras. Just go to nascar.com forward slash mobile. Brennan Poole trying to move forward in that 42. Brennan scored outside the top 20. He's the next car that this car right here, Casey Kane's going to catch so Brendan better keep searching for speed hopefully find it fast because Casey Kane is coming he's running some great laps not to mention Kyle Busch behind him is getting is pushing really Casey Kane and Kyle Busch he's looking for speed as well look what he's done he's gone all the way to the wall uh, he's not leaving inches he's not leaving feet from between him and the wall he's leaving inches so watch as he enters turn three he's going to enter, enter really high try to stay against the wall getting in the corner and just hold it all the way around the corner uh, that's a good sign that we're seeing multiple groove. That's that's what we want to see. That'll make exciting racing on restarts. Over a mile an hour faster than Casey Kane. The gap 2.2 seconds. Actually now under two seconds. The gap between Casey Kane and Kyle Busch. Kelly. Kyle Busch running second now, but he was pretty disappointed with his fifth place qualifying effort after his run, and he found out where he ranked. He said, well, that stinks. That was a really good lap. That's all I've got. And then when I talked to him and asked him what more he had for the race, he said, well, now I don't know, because I really thought we were a second to third place car, and now I'm not so sure what we have. They kind of battled both loose and tight on the long runs during practice. 
Kyle Busch fell back initially, has worked his way back up to second. And you saw that contact he had earlier with the 33. The team has been doing their best to check out the right side of that 54. There's no tire rub. Everything looks good to go on the 54, Mike. Kelly, make no mistake about it. There's only one goal for the two team right now, and that's to win races. They know the championship is out of reach with five races to go. So much, in fact, that Mike Hillman said, hey, look, we're not going to second guess any pit strategy. We're just going to go for it. As for Brian, he said, look, there is no tomorrow. I'm going to be as aggressive as I possibly can be throughout the course of a race and on restarts. He said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this car to the front. And when it comes to evaluating risk versus reward, I'm not going to be conservative at all. Right now, a little bit loose off, tight entry, but feeling pretty good running sixth. Marty? Mike Ty Dillon back in the ninth position right now. The car started tight for him, but it's coming to him now, getting a little bit better the longer they run here. You know, in the middle of the season here, Ty and his brother Austin swapped teams. So that means that right now Ty is driving the car that Austin won with here in May and also won with at Las Vegas. When I asked Austin about that earlier this week, he said, man, that's wrong. The one thing I wanted was that race car. But Ty gets it this weekend, trying to get it to the front, and would love to do what his brother did here in May and put it in victory lane. Dave? Yesterday in practice, Daniel Suarez's car was so loose and he was struggling so bad that the team did something they'd wanted to do for a while this season. Kyle Busch finishing practice early, jumped in the 18 and affirmed to the team that this car definitely had some handling issues. Well, I think they might have fixed it. I just checked with Eric Phillips and he says now the car is tight. It swung the wrong way and Daniel's actually lost positions since the start of the race. Brad Keselowski, who started the race 13th, He's made his way up into the top 10, currently running seven. Brad Keselowski working to get up front, always competitive when he runs in the Xfinity Series. Listen into his radio just moments ago. Pretty happy with how it drives on exit with a highlight. Seems satisfied early in this run. And he started far enough back where he has to work his way up. You know, he, you know, as we just reported, he's always fast when he drives his car, will have a chance to win. But because of where he started, he first has to gain the track position. Rick, it's always difficult when these races start with a long green flag run. We're 39 laps into it right now. You know, these, these Xfinity cars, we expect to be able to go 57 to 60 laps. We had pace laps, and remember, this isn't like the Sprint Cup side. They don't have fuel injection, so they have to kind of guess a little bit on their fuel mileage to start these races. So I would expect to see some teams around lap 50, lap 55, but it doesn't give you a lot of time to work in your car, especially when the 88 of Casey Kane, the 54 of Kyle Busch. You see Kyle has caught the leader now. These two are running great lap times. I have a feeling we're going to see Casey Kane take the high line. He's going to have to if he wants to block Kyle. He might not be able to. Yeah. Kyle Busch goes up high. Casey Kane stays down low. But you just heard Kyle get out of the gas a little bit earlier when he entered turn one. But now with that momentum, he's right back on the back bumper of the 88 of Kane. Here he goes to pass for the lead to the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Busch out front in Charlotte. It's going to be interesting with me. Like you said, Jeff, I expect the Casey Kane to move up there. But now we'll see if he follows Kyle Busch. Will he see where Kyle Busch is running and think if he wants to bring his car up there and maybe give it a try? See, Kyle ran the bottom because he didn't want to be behind the 42. Going through one and two, he thought he might could get next to him. He didn't want to get trapped behind him, so Kyle ran the bottom. Kyle Busch out front, leading now his second lap at Charlotte tonight. 34 laps for Casey Kane. Austin Dillon led five laps after winning the pole earlier today. Wasn't able to hold on to that top spot as Dillon has fallen back to fourth in the big picture of the championship. Chris Buescher still in the top five. He's running fifth. Chase Elliott's his closest competitor running eighth. Ty Dillon back there in ninth. Regan Smith is 12th. We look at the championship.
Tonight's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield of Food. Beautiful shot of this mile and a half racetrack that so many teams call home. The President Cup golf had a big turnaround by the international team on day two. But the American team still holds a five and a half, four and a half lead heading into the double session matches in day three. Coverage of the President's Cup in South Korea tonight on Golf Channel and tomorrow at noon on NBC. Chris Busher, the points leader in the Xfinity Series coming in. He had a 24 point advantage over Chase Elliott. In the race, Kyle Busch now has a second lead over second place Casey Kane. Eric Jones had been running some of the fastest laps, holding on to third. And he's three seconds behind Kyle Busch. Chris Busher has moved up to four. And we're seeing the caution has come out. Debris on the racetrack. And this makes it easier for crew chiefs and drivers. You won't have to worry about a green flag pit stop now. Everyone will come to pit road. But it might be congested. 20 drivers still on the lead lap. 20 cars will be on pit road when they open pit road. Free pass is going to go to Jeremy Clements in the 51. Pretty simple here, right? Four tires, fill it with fuel. You know, really not an opportunity to do two with uh, you know, 49 laps on the tires. This is about four tires and fill it with fuel. Yeah, Jeff, you need to take enough fuel that at the rate at which the fuel dumps in his race cars, you're going to be waiting on fuel anyway. Between that and the tire wear, this is one of those uh, simple ones. Come down, four tires of fuel, execute. Really communicate with your driver, understand what you need because the track's going to continue to change. You want to try to get ahead of it on adjustments. After this stop, still a minimum of two more stops that will have to take place. The debris being picked up. Everyone will be tucked in behind Kyle Busch. Pace car has picked up Kyle. And the green light in the back of the pace car indicating that pit road is open. Kyle Busch will come off of the track and make the left turn onto pit road to the attention of his crew. Tricky pit road to get onto here, Jeff, or not so bad? Under caution, it's not hard because you can see really well. Under green, it is very difficult. Let's go to Mike. And they're on pit road right now. Casey Kane saying his car has been a little bit loose center. Expect them to make a chassis adjustment. They're going to go to work on the track bar, probably lower that at least one round. A four-tire change also being called for on the 88. Kelly? Championship points leader Chris Bush in the upper right. That 60 car said he's a little tight on entry, just two free off. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Pressure adjustment for Goodyear tires to no go fuel and Kyle Bush lower left. No changes for him. Four tires to no go fuel. He said it was just a little tight through center, Marty. Kelly Eric Jones said his car on the bottom was very good, but a little bit loose at the very end of the run for him. And they were really good in and off. They put on four Goodyear tires and a very small air pressure adjustment. They also gained one spot there, as you see on pit road, Rick. Eric Jones looked like he hit the brakes hard right before he got to the last line. That race off pit road brought to you by Geico. We'll reset the field when we return.
Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Xfinity Series Racing presented by AutoZone. The 33 of Austin Dillon on the radio moments ago. He yanked it, man. Ty, the lower you come off these corners, just as far down there as you can, you're better than that. There you go, like this. Where I get back to that's his grandfather, Richard Childress. Richard is one of those car owners that if he sees something, he's going to let you know. So what he saw was that Austin was a little bit higher than he thought he needed to be. Uh, and if you look right here, you can see Austin, he goes to the bottom, then he leaves the bottom. If you compare that to where the, the car behind him, Busher is, you see the 60s just a little bit lower on the racetrack. So his grandfather was up in the, up in the spotter stand or actually in the infield somewhere and saw that, gave that information to Austin, said you're going to run faster if you can run there. And, you heard Austin say, yep, I'm going to get right back to it. He was probably trying something different. It wasn't working, so he was going to go back to what was working. Getting ready for our first restart, and Charlotte Motor Speedway has made sure the fans here know exactly where the restart zone is. There's actually lines on the racetrack. There's the restart zone painted on the wall as well as on the grass on the infield. It's Kyle Busch and Eric Jones, one and two, coming into that restart zone. Kyle Busch back into the gas. We're back underway. Kyle Busch so good at restarts as you see him fan out three and four wide going into turn one. Remember the initial start, Chase Elliott made up a ton of spots, three wide off the top. He had that same idea there, but the 33 of Austin Dillon went up to block him. Some sparks flying from behind the 54. He has three car length lead already over Eric Jones, Chris Busher, Casey Kane, Austin Dillon, Brad Keselowski. And many times, Steve, if a spotter sees a driver working the outside really hard on restarts, and on the next restart, if he's behind you, he'll let his driver know, hey, look, the nine car, Chase Elliott, the, on the restart of the start of the race, he went to the top. He got a lot of spots. So you as a driver know that that's an aggressive driver. He's going to be looking to do that, and you'll try to block that so he doesn't get by you. And these restarts, they're crazy. Not just the front row, the second row, all the way back in the field. You see right here the 25 of John West Talley gets high in three and four. And he just gets away from him a little too high, catches the wall. And then once you get into the wall, Jeff, it's so hard to get the car off the wall. He does a good job there, but the damage is already done. Take a look from Brennan Poole's perspective. John West Townley trying to ride the momentum from a week ago when he was out in Las Vegas running in the Camping World Truck Series race and got a win. His first NASCAR win coming in Las Vegas in the Truck Series. Brennan Poole to the inside. John West Townley on that high line. Those two racing for position. John West is obviously he's had a tough career. You know, he's been in a lot of accidents, had a lot of things happen. And uh, but you know what? He won that race last week. I don't care if you win it on fuel mileage. I don't care how you win it. They, once you get that trophy, it's yours. They can't take it away from you. He's got to give a guy the confidence after running as many races as he has. Still on the lead lap, 21 cars. Jeremy Clements got the free pass to get onto the lead lap. Casey Kane in the 88. Just in front of Austin Dillon in the 33. Casey Kane out of an Umclaw, Washington. As Austin Dillon, did he listen to his grandfather's advice? Looks as though he is right on the bottom of the racetrack. Can't get any lower than that. And you can see everybody's running the bottom right now. The initial start of the race, everybody kind of gets bottled up a little bit. You maybe can make a move on the outside, but on new tires with a lot of grip, essentially everybody's just trying to go around the racetrack the shortest way they can, and that's on the very bottom. As the tires start to wear out and handling starts to become more of an issue, that's when we see that the drivers look for other places to go, and we'll see the groove wide now. But on restarts, you can see where you want to be. You want to be right on the bottom. Marty. And guys, the, perhaps the reason Austin Dillon couldn't keep it on the bottom, Jeff, we saw that replay, is because the car was extremely tight. He said from the middle of the corner off, it just wouldn't turn. He said it felt like the right front completely quit working. When they came in this past time, they went up two rounds on the track bar, just trying to loosen up that 33 and make it better. And you can see, working already, uh, better already, he's able to keep it right on the bottom like Pop Pop wants him to. 
We'll see if it works for him. That will be the big question if he is able to benefit from that line. Currently in the fifth spot. Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, Chris Busher, Casey Kane, Austin Dillon. The top five, Brad Keselowski, Brian Scott, Chase Elliott, Brendan Gaughan, Daniel Suarez switching spots in the top ten. Battle for the seventh spot, Brian Scott, Chase Elliott. You see Chase, Chase Elliott in eighth. I mean, he's running well. He's, it's a good race. I've been competitive, not leading fast, but he's been good enough to run in the top ten solid league. But that's not good enough. Chris Busher, the point leader that the guy Chase is trying to catch, he's running third. So he's racing now, you know, racing now, he's back to fourth. But, again, when you're trying to win a championship, you've got to get all the spots you can get. A little bit loose there for Casey Kane, and as Kane was chasing the 88 up the track, it opened the door for Chris Busher to try the crossover move, try to get back underneath that 88. How aggressive do you run if you're Chris Busher? Coming into this race, a 24-point cushion over second for the championship. You can't race for points yet with five to go? No, I think you just got to go. I just, you know what? I just think you have to trust yourself. You've gotten the lead in the points by being yourself. Just trust yourself. Do the things you know to do. Don't think about it too much, you know? Let your responses take control. Just be yourself. A year ago, it was Chase Elliott that was able to win the championship. In 2015, Chris Busher has already won two races. He run at, won at Iowa, first Iowa race this year, as well as at Dover in the first Dover race. A little bit tight now as he's able to go on the high side of Austin Dillon in the 33. Dylan trying to take that fourth spot away from Busher. And I think that move right there, I think that shows you what their mindset is. Their mindset's not to ride around. If they were going to ride around, he would have never been three wide on the out leaving the trial. Well, he would have just given that spot up, let Austin go on by. But he wanted to protect that spot, and he made it three wide. So I think that's a good sign that they're not here just to ride around. They're here to get really good finishes and try to win this race. That's another point because it's another position that he has lost as Austin Dillon was able to get by Chris Busher. Out front, though, it's Kyle Busch in front of Eric Jones.
Welcome back to NBCSN's coverage of NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Charlotte, presented by AutoZone. I want to take a look at our Toyota Camry on-track car, and we look at the front end of this car, Steve. Yeah, the, well, these competitors, when you talk about practicing the day and racing at night, one thing you have to keep in mind, you look right here at the front grille of this Camry, right now there's no tape on it. What these crew chiefs are going to have to do is the temperatures continue to cool, continue to ask the driver about the water and oil temperature. We talk how important dark downforce is. If there's an opportunity to add a piece of tape to that grill, that's free downforce. If the engine can afford to run warmer, that's free front downforce, making the car handle better. Making the car handle better. That's what every crew chief is trying to do for their drivers. We look at our Toyota driver update. Two Toyotas up front, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, and Daniel Suarez, also in the top ten running ninth. Eric Jones in that second spot has tried to stay within about a second of Kyle Busch. A pretty impressive run for Eric Jones. Just a 19-year-old out of Byron, Michigan. Got his start in NASCAR because he was seen by Kyle Busch, the guy he's trying to chase down now. We mentioned that earlier in the Cup show today, the fact that Jeff Gordon really found Jimmy Johnson and gave him that opportunity to make the move up into the Cup Series, and look what's happened there. Eric Jones trying to make the most of this situation as well. He's definitely impressed Joe Gibbs and Joe Gibbs racing to the point where they wanted to make sure that they keep him driving their cars. Yeah I was going to say I think he's impressed most of the owners in the Sprint Cup and in the Xfinity Series. His consistency his maturity behind the wheel no different really than this gentleman right here driving the 18 car Daniel Suarez. You know at the beginning of the year there was really not a whole lot known about this kid. He was a little bit of an unknown coming from the Mexico Series but what a great job he's done his 18 car week in and week out whatever style track we throw at him the series throws at him handling issues traffic whatever it may be Jeff he seems to adapt very well and guess who he drives for also <laughs> so if you look at Joe Gibbs yeah. racing you know look down the road you think about the future uh, they have two young superstars driving for him two guys that have proven they can do it uh, Daniel's done a great job every week he seems like he improves he learns quickly He'll make a mistake about every week. He makes a mistake in practice at some point in the race, but then he doesn't make it again. So I've really been impressed with Daniel's done this year. I, I, I think he's done a great job. You got Daniel Suarez. He's a 23 year old out of Monterey, Mexico. Obviously one of the bright stars continuing to rise in the Xfinity series. And then right behind him, Chase Elliott has already been tagged as the replacement for if you can replace a legend in the sport. But Jeff Gordon will retire in the end of 2015 and Chase Elliott will take over driving the 24 for Hendrick Motorsports in 2016. Chase is such a smart driver. You know, you rarely see Chase make mistakes. He's he's just very methodical. He make, he's very, very fast, but he's also very methodical. Uh, reminds me of somebody that he's akin to. You know, his dad drove the same way. His dad was exceptionally fast. So Bill Elliott was, you know, obviously a cup champion. Uh, had an unbelievable career, and he has a lot of tendencies that are the same as his dad. So the one thing I like about Chase and also Eric Jones, you know, these two guys, they, they, they haven't forgotten where they came from. I mean, they're going to leave tomorrow. They're going to Winchester, Indiana. They're going to run the Winchester 400 on Sunday. It's a half-mile short track, much like Bristol. You know, they still appreciate short track racing. They enjoy it. They're going to they're gonna pack up, and they're heading that way on Sunday. And just in front of Chase Elliott is that 18 of Daniel Suarez. For more on Daniel, let's go to Dave. The praise is well deserved that you've been giving Daniel. One of the things is he figures things out. In fact, before that last round of pit stops, he said, it took me a while to figure out how to be fast. And that was something that drivers learn when they have a car that's too tight from the center off. Back up the corner, drift it in a little bit slower, and you'll be a better exit on every corner. Marty? for his teammate Eric Jones he says he's a little bit tight especially late in turns one and two and he said you know what we're really good right here but uh the guy out front's pretty good too I guess the guy out front would be his teammate and mentor Kyle Busch you know you guys were talking about the stable at Joe Gibbs Racing Eric Jones was asked about that a few weeks ago and he said 
I'm honestly good waiting a few years for a cup ride if anything opens up at JGR. The cup series is not going anywhere. I'm not in a hurry. I would say, Jeff, if you're a young driver, it's worth waiting on a JGR cup ride, isn't it, if you know you can get into one eventually. Listen, I love that attitude. You know, he's young. There's plenty of time. Learn everything you can. Let me tell you something. The Xfinity Series is difficult, but it is not nearly as difficult as the cup Sprint Cup Series. When you take that step, that's a huge step, and it's great to have a little more experience when you do it. What's the harm? What's the harm in running two, three, four years in the Xfinity Series to really get yourself grounded? There's no harm as long as you don't give up an opportunity. That's where it's difficult. Young driver, only a year's of experience, and an opportunity comes. How do you say no? You have to take it. But hopefully these guys will have a little bit of time to grow and become a better driver before they have to make that step. Well, I think the blueprint's out there. Look at Joey Logano, how many years he's been in this series. Championship contender last year, but it didn't come overnight. It came from years of, of experience because one thing's for sure, Jeff, you mentioned it. Nothing gets easier on Sunday. Every part of the race is more difficult. NASCAR has a rule. One team can only have four drivers four cars so right now Joe Gibbs racing is full in the cup series Daniel Suarez not afraid to wait Welcome back to the race for the Cure 300, the NASCAR Chase app, the ultimate way to support your driver during the chase for the Sprint Cup. Customize your favorite driver's nation flag. Get help filling out your chase grid and much more. Download it today in the Apple App Store, Google Play, or via nascar.com forward slash chase. Let's take a look at the Hisense Smart Race Strategy. What's so difficult for these Xfinity teams is they had all their practice in the middle of the day. So who made the best adjustments from day practice to the night race? And then you look at the 54 with Kyle Busch, how fast he is. But if they don't make any changes to keep up with this racetrack, as more rubber gets laid into it, they may get behind and someone ultimately beat them. A few more updates. Let's go to Kelly Stavis. Point leader Chris 
Chris Bush a running fifth. His career best finish here at Charlotte is sixth, and he says, this hasn't exactly been my favorite racetrack. When I asked him why, he said, well, I crashed her my first race ever on lap nine by myself, and these guys just won't let me forget it. But then he said his crew chief, Scott Graves, is doing a great job of helping him like this place more. His teammate, Bubba Wallace, ran here well in May, so they've been using his notes to go off, and he felt like they'd have the speed to contend with the Cup guys for a win here today. Last word out of Chris Buescher as he's saying it might be time to free me up a little bit. It's getting tighter on this run, Marty. Kelly, another of the championship contenders, Ty Dillon, back in the 10th position. He said, handling-wise, we're kind of where we need to be right now. We would like a long green flag run because the longer they ran on the first run, the better this number three car got. He did apologize to the guys. He spun the tires on that last restart, lost a couple of spots, has only been able to gain a few of those back. Very tough to pass out there. I asked him, how do you get back in this championship mix? He said, one simple answer, get to victory lane. That'll start putting the pressure on the other two guys, Mike. And there's a lot of that going around, that's for sure. Regan Smith echoes that very sentiment, Marty. Even though he won last week in Dover and kind of pulled himself back into this championship conversation, he's been very realistic about his situation. He says, the only way we can control our own destiny is if we win. Right now, unfortunately, though, he does not have the car to do it. It's been a handful. Struggling over the bump, saying it's been very harsh. He's also been saying he's been sliding the nose. And most recently, struggling with a very loose rear of that race car. Expect some significant adjustments on the 7 next time down pit road. Dave? Mike Bubba Wallace doesn't have the car to win either. He's been very uh, passionate about the way that car pushes right to the fence just like that off of the corner. He says the rear end is okay, but off the corner, it really pushed right toward the fence. And he had a birthday yesterday. I think maybe they could have gotten him a new car. He said, uh, maybe I could have a new car by Homestead because this one is not running well. Looks like he's taking the high line for good, guys. The other guy who's taking the high line is the 22 listening to his radio. Do you think I need to try the wall? And the feedback that he got, nobody's any good up there. As he works the bottom of the track, he's able to get by John West Townley. Townley, who is two laps down now. Marty? Eric Jones running in second, Rick, but a little bit of an issue. They didn't quite get it full on the last stop. So now Eric Jones is about four laps away from stopping. That's going to be about 10 laps earlier than everybody else. What they hope then happens is it stays green throughout that run, and a caution doesn't catch them out. They're going to fit early on the 20 car. Brendan Poole in the 42 looked as though he might have got into the wall just a little while ago. Let's take another look. Some of these guys running that higher line. Yeah, this 42 of Brandon Poole yep. currently in the 22nd position. Just gets in a little too high, gets back to the gas. The car pushes, gets up into the wall. This is a disappointing run for this team. You know, they expect to run better than this. Currently two laps down in 22nd. This is Brendan's first race here. Three back to the 54. This is Brendan's first race here, so you know, all this is part of a learning process. He haven't run as well as he wanted to run, but you know he made a small mistake there, got in the wall. He'll learn from it. Uh, this is a very smart young man. He does a good job driving. So you know those things are going to happen when you're young. You just have to learn from it and move on. See the way the air affects the hood flaps as it came up as he was right on the back bumper of that hood car in front of him. Kyle Busch also might be thinking about fuel and maybe they didn't get it full enough let's listen to their radio we're a tiny bit short on fuel us the 20 did not get it full the last stop so we'll have to short the guys a tiny bit yeah, the good news is both the first and second place cars are going to short pit. What that's going to do is make the rest of the field make a tough decision because when those cars hit pit road and get some new tires, while there's not a, a ton of tire fall off tonight, Greg, there's a little bit, and you don't want to give the two fastest cars an advantage on new tires. They're going to really go out there and start putting some laps down, and next thing you know, you're going to be really far behind when you cycle off pit Steve, road. Steve, he said the word short pit. Now they've been on the track for 48 laps. Is that short enough? I'm guessing it is for Eric Jones because he's on pit road. Marty. 
And Rick, this is right when Mike Wheeler said they needed to come down pit road lap 99. So as Steve mentioned, going to be interesting to see if everybody else comes down pit road now. He says it's a little bit tight, as we said a moment ago, late in turn two. Not too bad, so they're going to free it up just a little bit with an air pressure adjustment. Put on four Goodyear tires and try and pack it full of Sunoco fuel. This time, Mike Wheeler said, wait on me. And he said, go all the way on pit road now as hard as you can to the camera so they wanted to make sure they got it full this time since they didn't last time. Four tire stop fuel for the 20 and Chris Busher has the 18 with Daniel Suarez right behind him. Ty Dillon on pit road now Dave. One of Elliott Sadler hits pit road. He was running 14th, which means he was losing spots since the resumption of the race. Car is loose everywhere. He'll get four Goodyear tires and a fill of Sunoco fuel. Marty? Ty Dillon on pit road, too. So as Steve predicted, a lot of these guys coming in when they saw the other cars come down pit road. Ty said the front is right right now. We need to be freer on late exit. So they went down. We're up one round on the track bar, Kelly. 54 of Kyle Busch looking for his ninth win here. He said he started out a little bit tight through the center of one and two, but the car came around and sorted it itself out. Four tires and Sunoco fuel for Kyle Busch. Mike? Brian Scott having a pretty solid run. However, he's lacking rear grip. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment and a four tire change. Green flag pit stops taking place. Point leader Chris Busher on pit road. Kelly. Team trying to keep Chris Busher out to help him get on the lead to lead a lap, excuse me, and then Pitt, he said the car is just a little bit too tight. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment, give him four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel, Dave. His teammate Darrell Wallace Jr. spent that run at just outside the top ten. Four Goodyear tires full of Sunoco fuel. The car was uh, tight on exit of the corner. Rick, you have a dominant car or a dominant two cars when Joe Gibbs Racing make two mistakes don't get their car as full as they need to pit early, a good eight or 10 laps early, yet it drags the entire field of pit road, Marty. Austin Dillon coming down pit road, and you mentioned all of them coming down pit road. Once I saw those dominant Gibbs cars come down pit road, Steve, he said, I need more of that same adjustment he made last time. It was very good. He said, I could use a little more forward dry off and make an air pressure adjustment to Austin Dillon's 33 car. Now he's gonna try and see if he can catch the leaders, Dave. Marty, that was a good run for Daniel Suarez. He picked up four positions. They implored him no penalties coming in. We're going to give you four tires and just a little air pressure adjustment for a car that was a little loose in turns one and two. The right sides are on, coming around to the left. Good stop so far for Suarez, and he'll re-enter the race trying to go the same direction forward since that last run. I'm going to be honest. Jeff, we talked about this. I, I understand why you don't want to lose time to the leaders. But if you're a seventh to 13th place car, not in danger of going down the lap, I think I would have taken the opposite. I mean, I don't have car enough to beat. I like what Ryan Sieg is doing right here. We're going to run and try to catch a caution, perhaps get a little advantage on some of these guys. Even Daniel and what his team did, wait, stay out a little bit longer. Don't pit as soon as they pit. You're not in danger of going a lap down. Just, no one's really close to you, so stay out for five or six laps. I was surprised that everybody got drugged to pit road. I would have I would have thought maybe one or two would have gotten drugged, but the rest of them would have stayed for just a little bit. The, the, the point is, though, Sieg, out front. he is the leader, Rick, but I like Jeff put a little caveat to his strategy. Don't run long enough to get laps. We're going to see right here Ryan Sieg off the pace coming to pit road. Did he run too long? Will Kyle Busch put him a lap down? He had a little bit, about a 10-second lead on Kyle Busch, so he should come out on the racetrack just in front of him. And Ryan Singh and his team, they've been running well. They were running 15th. I mean, before all this started, they were running 15th, so they have a good, solid run tonight. Trying to stay at pit road speed, Kelly. It's been a solid day today, and it was a great race. Last week, he was running top 12 at Dover. They ran out of gas, though, with three laps to go and had to come make a pit. He said he's a little bit loose on this exit. This run, you see, it's four Goodyear tires and some Sunoco fuel. You saw the adjustment there for Ryan Sieg in the 39. So the 28-year-old out of Tucker, Georgia, Ryan Sieg making his way back out on the track. Kyle Busch in that 54 may have had a little bit of a struggle getting onto pit road. We mentioned under green flag conditions, quite a bit more difficult. trying to carry as much speed as you can get into that orange cone and he got he did get it slowed down in time and watch him right on board we have an adam 
Good, 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 good. 3,900, compensate if you need, here. Almost, uh, almost felt like I heard it wheel hop just a little bit, like when he downshifted, going to a lower gear, that it, it, it got so many turns, so many RPMs, that it hopped the rear tires, and that's why it got loose. Well, whenever he did, it worked, because through that cycle of pit stops, he gained two seconds on Eric Jones. So, while Eric Jones is a remarkable talent on the racetrack, he still could learn a little something from what I consider the best in the business on and off pit road. That's Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch, the best in the business when it comes to winning at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the Xfinity Series. He's out front once again. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. And by AutoZone, for parts to helpful advice. AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone. Let's see who's topping the Xfinity speed charts here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Of course, Kyle Busch fastest lap of the race over 180 miles an hour Eric Jones imagine that he's running second after green flag pit stops 60 car of Chris Busher just moments ago a little bit loose trying to make a move around the 70 gets loose and 18 of Suarez drives in the middle so had to chase it up the racetrack one didn't stop there, did it? No. No, it didn't. Chris Buescher in sixth. Daniel Suarez in front of him in fifth. Championship contenders. Chris Buescher running sixth. Ty Dillon is ninth. Chase Elliott tenth. Regan Smith is twelfth. That's exactly what Chris Buescher needs to do with five races left. Just continue to extend that points lead. Two, three, four points a race. Next thing you know, he'll be 40 points up before he goes into Homestead. Although he needs to be careful. That looks like another big slide underneath that lap car. Kyle Busch, we mentioned how successful he is, especially here at this racetrack. 
He's now led 1,258 career laps at Charlotte in the Xfinity Series, and that now passes Mark Martin for the most all-time laps led at Charlotte in the Xfinity Series. Kyle Busch took the most wins away in this series and now continuing to extend his lead on the competition. You know, for a lot of years, Mark Martin just dominated this series, and, you know, it was very, very difficult to beat him. And then Kyle Busch has come in, and he's done even more. I mean, he's won more races, led more laps. It's hard to believe. I would have never thought that. I would never believe that someone could do more than Mark Martin did. I mean, he just dominated. But Kyle and this team, they have found a way to step it up. From the time he got in this car, they, they started winning races, and they're continuing on now. Kyle Busch has a 1.4 second lead over Eric Jones as we go NASCAR nonstop. Wednesday night rivalry is on NBCSN. The defending Stanley Cup champion Blackhawks will head to Philadelphia to face the Flyers. The night you love to hate, Wednesday at 7 Eastern on NBCSN. Kyle Busch out front by 1.2 seconds over Eric Jones. In NASCAR nonstop, we saw the 62 of Brendan gone on pit road. What was going on, Dave? Ricky was running 13th, and he felt like he had a vibration, possibly a loose wheel, so he came to pit road. They changed all four, and then potentially identified the left rear as the culprit. So a vibration brings the 62 onto pit road. And with that, Brendan gone now two laps down to race leader Kyle Busch. Let's go through the field. We'll start with Kelly. Bush in that 54 car who has eight wins here in the Xfinity Series, six truck wins here at Charlotte, yet to do it in the Sprint Cup Series. But you'll notice that the traditional green monster logo has been painted pink. Well, that's in support of the Pretty in Pink Foundation, the Kyle Busch Foundation donating $57,000 to cover the medical expenses 
of 22 champions, as they call them, who are currently going through treatments for breast cancer. A very worthy cause that Kyle Busch and his wife Samantha are supporting all night. Kyle's been happy with this car. He just keeps saying, yep, it's pretty good. Marty? Kelly's teammate Eric Jones trying to catch him. He's in the second position right now. He said he's having to chase the car up the track pretty much every lap. A corner exit car is just too loose. Believe it or not, this is the first time that he and Mike Wheeler have been back to a track together since they've been working together. Mike Wheeler told me earlier tonight that has meant so much just because the notes that he's going off of from May are the conversations that he and Eric have had, and that's made a difference. Clearly running much better right now up in the second position. Austin Dillon's been one of the fastest his cars on the track for pretty much this entire run. They are making gains on this 33 car. Remember, he fell back early in the race after starting on the pole, has worked his way back up to the third position now. He said he needs help off turn two and turn four. Just needs to turn a little bit better, Mike. Just before that round of pit stops, Casey Kane was saying his entry was very loose. It was actually his idea to add wedge to that race car. That's what they did last time down pit road. He said it has made a difference. The car is much better, although still just a touch looser than he'd like, Dave. Daniel Suarez's problem in practice was a loose race car. He says that's the direction the car is going. Looser and looser as I run, although he is running into the top five, Kelly. With just five races to go, Chris Buescher says they're not quite points racing yet. They're approaching this weekend like any other, going for the win. But he said, we'll pay attention where the others are running, and we'll probably get a little more conservative toward the end, depending on where our rivals stand. Behind him is Brad Keselowski in the 22 car. The last time he raced an Xfinity car in a mile and a half oval, he won it at Kentucky. But in spite of running seventh now, he's had his hands full with this 22. So the car is bouncing so much, I can hardly see. I don't feel anything that's changed since those last adjustments you gave me. Mike? Kelly, talking to Brian Scott before the race, it seemed like he knew exactly what he needed to do to get around this place. He said he needs to tie, he needs to tie the corners to better, better together, and he also needs to make sure he doesn't do something he's done in the past. That would be overdrive the corners. He's been paying very close attention to that throughout the course of the night, although the car's been a tick tight. Marty? Mike has been tough sledding for Ty Dillon tonight. Can't really seem to get past the, past the ninth position right now, but they are much better on the longer run, so hoping this one stays green and they can get past their teammates Ryan Scott. A moment ago, very politely on the radio, they were trying to encourage him and said, guys, don't talk to me. Let me do my work. Mike. The nine team practice was, and I quote, according to Ernie Cope, terrible. That's what he said. They just could not find the balance. So much, in fact, that this morning, even after the garage had opened, Ernie Cope was behind closed doors for a complete hour with his engineer coming up with a solution. They've apparently found something. The car's been running much better than it did in practice. He just says he needs a little bit more rear grip, but they are very happy with the gains they've made so far in this run. Meanwhile, Regan Smith, you heard us talk about the handful of a race car he had earlier. It's sliding the nose, having some trouble with the bumps. They made some adjustments last time down pit road. He says it's still a bit like it was before, but just a little bit better. Dave? Darrell Wallace Jr. has come around just a little bit with his race car because it has come around. He said we need to be running these times up front, but those were good changes you made. Mike? There was a time during this race where Ryan Reed said, uh, you know, I'm about knocking the fence down. We're that tight. They've gone to work on the car, made several wedge adjustments, and the car's balance has come a little bit back closer to what he would like. It's still a little bit tight, but not nearly what it was at the beginning of the race. Rick? Yeah, the difficult thing is, is Ryan Reed did get into the wall and almost knocked the fence down, but just ran along the wall for a while before he was able to pull it off. We have been on a 80-lap green flag run. We stay NASCAR nonstop.
Welcome back to NBCSN's coverage of NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Charlotte, presented by AutoZone. With just 62 laps to go in this Xfinity race, Kyle Busch still out front tomorrow. Big day. NASCAR America kicks it off at 5 o'clock. Countdown to green at 6. Sprint Cup Series Racing from Charlotte on NBC tomorrow at 7 o'clock. At 6 o'clock, guys, I, I'm telling you, I cannot wait to see Erendira Walinda. The Walindas performing once again at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Erendira is going to hang from below a helicopter right in front of the grandstands, supposedly 300 feet in the air, and do aerobatics in a hoop, a ring that will be uh, just, beno just below that helicopter. With no tethers, no safety net, I want to know who comes up with that idea. I mean, how do you, how does that, how is does that Aaron conversation Nero even that start? That or how is does that even Nick? start? That's a good question. Hey, I got an idea. And how do you Let's practice that? Let's get a helicopter and practice that. that? I, I, I don't know. But we will be watching. Absolutely. We are watching another dominant performance by the 54 car and Kyle Busch as the caution has come out. There's debris on the backstretch. So the gap that was 2.7 seconds now will be eliminated. And 59 laps to go right at that window. As far as you can come to pit road, fill it full of fuel, and you should be able to get to the end as long as you're getting decent gas mileage. Yeah, I mean, whatever we heard in the garage, you're at 58 to 59 laps, pretty consistent. Some teams are getting a little bit better, but by the time the pace car picks up the field, they run one lap before the pits open, we'll be inside 59 to go probably 58 to go so uh i think everybody should be good on fuel now it's what adjustments what adjustments do you make to your car to try to compete with this 54 of kyle Bush? elliot sadler is going to get the free pass he was the first car scored a lap down in 14th so there will be 14 cars on the lead lap be very difficult for someone to take a wave around since the last time they were on pit road was back in lap 100 105 maybe brendan gone on pit road at lap 119 because of the thought of a loose wheel. Yeah, so their only hope at this point would be to take the wave around, try to get the one down and race it from there. But those are the penalties when you pit under green is it costs you laps. It's very hard, to, especially in the Xfinity race. It's such a shorter race compared to the cup race. It's hard to recover from issues like that. They had gone 89 laps under green flag conditions. That ended the fourth longest green flag stretch of the season. So a long green flag run. Now we'll see them make their way onto pit road. Pit road is open, grabbing the debris off the back stretch. Brought out this just the second caution tonight. Let's go to Mike Massaro. They're headed down pit road right now. We focus in on the 88 of Casey Kane. They're right on their fuel window, so expect them to wait a little bit longer trying to pack that thing full of fuel. The handling of the race car has been very loose. He's been looking for a track bar adjustment. They're going to go down on it. Four tires as well. Kelly? Question that 54 car has been happy with his car all night. His crew chief, Chris, Chris Gale, said, need anything? He said, no. All good. You see, it's going to be four good your tires and fuel. Like Mike Wheeler told Eric Jones, we can make it from here, but it must be fuel full, guys. Loose to start for Eric Jones, too tight at the end, an air pressure adjustment. Austin Dillon said, don't do too much to the car. As you see Kyle Busch win the race off pit road, I don't want to be too free. A wedge adjustment and right rear air pressure adjustment for Austin Dillon, who was awfully quick at the end of that run. Now he got the caution he needed, Rick. Big issues for Chris Busher. He loses four spots on pit road.
Beautiful shot of Uptown Charlotte, 15 miles away from the track. It's tonight's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. You mentioned the 60 of Chris Busher, an issue on Pitt Road. Kelly, what was it? Well, as well, he came in to make some adjustments to that number 60 car, but things did not go well. What happened there, Ethan? Hose got caught under the right front there. So you heard of the air hose got caught under the right front that cost him four spots leaving pit lane. He'll restart 10 behind two of his championship rivals. Let's look what happened. So you see the tire change, you get up to leave as he comes around the nose of the car, the air hose is caught on the fender. So now he has to go take his left hand and the, get the line free, which is costing him his time, but he's also in the jack man's way. So it's that simple. The air hose gets caught on the fender, slows him down, slows the jack man down. Four spots on pit road, restarting 10th. Now he needs a clean restart. Jeff tried to gain some of those points back. That's, that puts Smith in front of him, Ty Dillard in front of him, and right next to him, right behind him, rather, is Chase Elliott. So the top four are all running together right now. Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, teammates tonight, running side by side. In row one, Kyle Busch once again shows the outside line as they enter the restart zone. Back into the gas very late in that restart zone. See how that stacks up the traffic all the way back in about row eight or row 10. Those guys were anticipating the restart. Kyle decided to run as late into the zone as he could. He has that prerogative, but it's hard farther back in the pack. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna lose the lead. Eric Jones gets in front of him and he was almost sideways up into the wall. Here comes Austin Dillon on the bottom of the track. Kyle Busch lost numerous spots. They're three wide as they come out of turn four. Now four wide. Here comes Eric Jones to the inside of Austin Dillon, trying to take the lead back away. Dillon with the momentum. He'll hold on to it as they go through one and two. Now is that gamesmanship in the restart zone and it ended up biting Kyle Busch? Well, the restart zone's longer, so now, you know, you have longer to, to wait and wait and wait. And, you know, that's one thing we talked about, this restart zone being bigger. Also, it stacks everybody up behind. When the leader has more options and he waits, the people behind him are anticipating when to go. We, we're going to see more in, more contact further back because you just don't know when the leader's getting ready to go. To the outside of Casey King, Kyle Bush trying to take third back. Fell all the way, almost out of the top five after that restart as Austin Dillon now in front of the field. Austin Dillon won the pole earlier today. Started on the pole and led the first five laps. Now back out in front of the field as the battle for third continues. Casey Kane with the advantage. Let's take another look at this restart. So it's more than just when Kyle Busch decides to go. As he enters the restart zone, he takes his time, which he can do. He waits all the way to the end of the restart zone, but he actually gets a pretty good restart right here. That trouble for Kyle, I think, is actually the 88 behind him. Casey Kane is spinning his rear tire. So, Jeff, you know how much help you need as his Xfinity car is getting going. Well, look how much more help Eric Jones has from the 33, where the 54 has no one on his rear bumper. That momentum carries the 20 down into turn one. And then there was a little bit of contact as they came out of turn number two. And right along with Kyle Bush, right there into the back bumper. Oh, and into the wall goes Kyle Bush in the 54. Caution comes out. Inside, let me see. Right side, KO'd. The 88 and 54 have been battling for the third spot. Right side, we're going to have to come down. It's, it's still rolling. dominant as Kyle Busch has been at Charlotte now Go finds himself in trouble. It all stems from a restart. He had the lead, loses the lead on the restart. The replay where we were showing you had a little contact with the 20, had to get out of the gas, gets him back into traffic. 
that's what can stem from that. Gets back there out of that fresh, clean air, racing people, and that's how you end up in an accident. You heard Kyle say, going to the garage, guys, I'm done. We'll see if he turns. Already goes into the stall, Kelly. Yeah, and crew chief Chris Gale had to convince Kyle Busch to come to pit road versus going back to the garage. He said, let us have a look at it. Get good clearance on those tires. Have a good look. Look everything over. But Kyle was saying, man, it's just killed. It's dead. It's a shame. He certainly voiced his displeasure uh, the moment he hit the wall. I don't think he was too pleased with the 88 there. And all along, they had been coaching him since he fell back on that restart, saying, hey, we still got 50 laps to go. we got plenty of time. We'll work our way back up there. And right now, you see the crew going to work to see if they can, in fact, salvage this race for the 54 and get him back out, or if they'll have to bring it back to the garage. So while they're working on the car, let's take a look at how it all happened. So they've gone through the trouble, entering turn one. You can see they get together. Z88 tries to open up the arc a little bit to try to help his entrance. Gets into the side of the 54 just a little bit. Then a little bit later. Yeah, a few laps later, you see the 88 runs down pretty low. The 54 kind of chases him towards the grass, gets in the right side door. They bang a couple more times as they leave the trioval. They're just stuck side by side. Seem to be both getting frustrated being stuck in that position. And then a little contact from the 88. Hit him in the back bumper, got him sideways. Took them both up into the wall. Like the most damage to the 54, though. And there's the damage on the 88, Mike. Yeah, and you can see the right side damage. They're pulling away the fender from the wheel on the rear. They've already removed the right front tire. They're banging out the fender there as well. Significant damage. They're going to have a lot of work here on pit road on the 88. Kelly? It was a troublesome pit stop for the 60 of Chris Buescher last time. Look better this time. He said the adjustment that they made helped tighten them up. It was four tires and fuel and an air pressure adjustment for Chris Buescher. So Busher, after an issue the last time they were on pit road, comes back to pit road because they weren't that far from being last car on the lead lap. We go NASCAR nonstop.
Welcome back. Still under our third caution. Only 45 laps to go as the 54 now in the garage. At the most recent incident between the 54 and the 88. Let's listen in to both radios. We'll start with the 54. And the response from the 88 on the radio. Just got it, just clipped and then kind of shot me up at the same time. The two had been rubbing a little bit yep. prior to the contact that put them both up into the wall. Yeah, I mean, you see there going into turn three, the 54 kind of checks up in the middle of the corner. Not really checks up, just enters the corner. I think at a normal rate of speed, it looks to me like the 88 just. Maybe had enough. Got in the rear hotter. bumper of the 54. Getting ready for the restart. Austin Dillon and Eric Jones making up row number one. This time Austin Dillon on the inside. Eric Jones on the outside. As they enter the restart zone. Green flag back in the air. Austin Dillon trying to make that inside line work. Brad Keselowski behind him. Kozlowski now pulling even with Eric Jones for second. What that situation has done for the rest of the field, it's just given all these guys here new, new life. They've been chasing that 54 all night long. Here it is with 44 to go. The 54 is not in the race anymore. It's a whole new ball game. Austin Dillon trying to do what he did earlier this year after starting from the pole win at Charlotte. Eric Jones wanting to change history does not want to have a similar situation a similar outcome. Been running very strong all race Eric Jones still looking to be out front of the field has not done it. Austin has led 19 laps. Chris Buescher, Chase Elliott, the championship contenders running side by side door to door. Buescher 25 points ahead of Chase Elliott. You see it on the top of the screen as they run the points. Only four races after tonight. And Chase Elliott trying to get everything tagged the wall coming out of four. Chase, you can see how hard Chase is running the 60 car. Busher trying to keep him behind him, trying to make a big move, getting into three, pull the air off of Busher's spoiler. It didn't work. Chris was able to keep the momentum going and complete the pass. But Austin Dillon, he's having a hard time breaking clear of Eric Jones and Brad Keselowski. Eric Jones is right there in his rear bumper. Gap gone. Eric Jones looking at the high line now. And there's Brad, been struggling all night, not really running that great. Series of cautions, been working on that car, and now he has a shot to win the race. Jones stays down at the bottom of the track through one and two. <laughs> 88 of Casey Kane back out on track. Ryan Reed in the 16 up high. Elliott Sadler in the one down below, but a lot of tire rub from the 88. They're gonna have to probably get that fixed. He had hard contact with the wall when he got into got into Bush. So they came in and did a pit stop, but they may not have got the fenders pulled out good enough. We may they may have to they may have to pit to fix that. That is a lot of smoke. It hadn't been smoke in the last few laps. I don't wonder if he didn't make contact with another car here on this last one. I got a pit. There you heard it at this time. Now he's got Ryan Reed down below though. He won't be able to come to pit road now that he's gone to that high line. Looks back to the inside of Ryan Reed. Kyle Busch got out of the 54. They were working on it in the garage. Climbed into his golf cart and drove off. 38 laps to go. It's pretty bad from here, but it got better that lap. That's, that's, uh, he's looking for some direction. He yeah. can't see it. All he can do is smell it. He has to have someone tell him what to do. I mean, that's a 
that's a really good, difficult position to put a driver in saying, hey, it's up to you. you. You can't see it. You don't know. You need somebody to talk to you a little bit more than that, in my opinion. Yeah, driver doesn't want to have a, a tire go down. And, and nobody wants to make the call. You know, right. Nobody wants to say, yes, you have to pit, because if you do pit and you didn't need to, well, guess what? That took away your shot to win the race. But, you know, that's a tough spot to put a driver in. It's just very, very difficult. He cannot see what's going on. He can only smell it. 36 to go, and Casey Kane is running 10. He's on the lead lap, but five seconds behind Austin Dillon. Darrell Wallace Jr. in the six. Chase Elliott in the nine. Every spot is a point. Chase Elliott trying to defend his championship. And now Darrell Wallace Bubba has taken a position away and a point away from Chase Elliott. Chris Buescher now has a 26-point lead over Chase Elliott. Regan Smith, 34 points. Ty Dillon, 38 points. The difference. Austin Dillon has a half-second lead over Eric Jones now. Brad Kozlowski stalled out in third. Daniel Suarez, fourth. Regan Smith is fifth. Championship leader, Chris Buescher. The Zest Ford. Running, running down the three of Ty Dillon. And he'll be able to work to the inside of that three and take that spot away. So he's trying to take advantage. He pitted on that 153. Ty Dillon uh, did not pit, and, uh, and, and Smith did not pit also. So... Chris Buescher wants this thing to run out, stay green the whole time, try to use those tires to his advantage to get back in front of the guys he's racing for the championship. Yeah, we talked at the top of the show. He did a great job of recovering. Here in the spring, he ran 11th, got beat by all his con contenders in the points. Right. He got beat by Dillon, by Chase Elliott, by Regan Smith. Now currently, only Regan Smith in front of him in fifth place is his, uh, the only points competitor in front of him, and he's right out of sights. And as the 60 Chris Buescher continues to run, he starts inching in on that seventh. Regan Smith, after winning at Dover last week, put his name right back in contention for a championship. Running fifth tonight. And Chris Busher looking to get by Regan Smith. Busher running sixth, Smith in fifth. There's the gap between fifth and sixth. Championship leader Chris Busher running sixth. We go NASCAR nonstop.
We're on lap 174 of the NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Charlotte, presented by AutoZone. Race leader, Austin Dillon. That's about a second lead over Eric Jones, Brad Keselowski, Daniel Suarez, and Regan Smith, the top five. Pretty nice save you saw on NASCAR nonstop, Brian Scott. Look back on that. He's right against the wall, he's in the throttle. Watch the back end start coming around. Big slide, Brendan Gaughan almost got into the back of him, did a nice job of not getting into the back of the two car. Brian Scott, after starting sixth, now running 13th. Points in the championship, Chris Busher, 27 points over Chase Elliott. Elliott has fallen back to ninth. Chris Busher has closed the gap on Regan Smith. But does he have enough time to close it even further and take that spot away? 24 laps to go. They've leveled out as far as the the lap times are concerned. The gap between them close to 60 feet separating the two cars. To Regan it feels like six feet and to Chris it feels like 190 feet. <laughs> it's amazing you know when you're trying to catch somebody you see the seven car how free he is he looks like he's really loose that enabled Chris to do, gain a little ground coming off the of turn two. Austin Dillon now has led 38 laps. He won't be able to lead the most laps. That's going to be Kyle Busch that will get credit for that. But Kyle Busch no longer in the race after the 54 and 88 got together. The 54 into the wall hard enough that Kyle Busch took it back to the garage. The 88 came back out on the track. Casey Kane still running on the lead lap. He's 11 seconds back. Austin Dillon, on the other hand, after starting on the pole, dropped back, stayed in the top 10 most of the first part of the race, but then was able to take advantage of the issues that the 54 had and get out front and now has led 40 laps doing what he did in May earlier this year. He has been incredible, especially on intermediate tracks like the mile and a half. Here in Charlotte, 29 races on mile and a half tracks. His average finish 5.1. All four wins on mile and a half tracks came from the pole. Could he add a fifth to that after winning the pole earlier today? For some more updates, let's go to Mike Massaro. You know, Rick, when you consider all the balance and handling issues Regan Smith had to sort through at the beginning of this race, it's got to be feeling like this is a pretty good run. It definitely has the potential to be a top five finish for him. Something I think he probably would like to have on his resume as he goes into the offseason. He said earlier this week that while he doesn't have anything firmed up for 2016 yet, he's spending every day on the phone trying to shake the trees and try to find something. He knows he needs to showcase his talent like he is tonight. Kelly? And chasing down Regan Smith is the championship points leader, Chris Busher. He qualified fourth. He'd been running inside the top six most of this race. And then remember, he had a slow pit stop when the air hose got stuck under the right front uh, wheel. Well, it cost him a lot of time, cost him four positions on track. And now he has been on the move. He got by Ty Dillon. One guy is trying to fend off for the championship. Now he's going after Regan Smith, Marty. Right behind him is Ty Dillon in that number three car. When I talked to him pre-race, he said, you know what, we've got nothing to lose in terms of the championship. But Nick Harrison told me we can only control what we can control. And it's been a rough night trying to control this three car. They start tight every run. They do get better the longer they run. But by the time the car gets better, they've lost too much track position. And a good example, this run, Mike, started fifth. We started fifth, I should say, now seventh. 
You know, Marty, Chase Elliott's crew chief, Ernie Cope, had a premonition that tonight might not be their night. He said, whenever we've run on the dual zone tire, we have struggled. This has not been the night they were looking for, although maybe a little bit better than the way they practice. They have the potential for a top 10, but it looks like they're going to lose ground in this championship hunt if it ends this way. Exactly the opposite of what they had hoped for. They'd hoped to come in here and gain chunks of ground on the 60. Rick? Hard to do, though, when Chris Buescher is running top five, top ten, where Chris Buescher right now in the sixth position. We've been keeping our eye on Brian Scott. He's running 13th and seems to have had his hands full earlier and once again another nice save by Brian. He's pretty much in the same place right against the wall even the corner back in comes around from him. <laughs> and again. guess who's right there. Yeah, he did a good job again. Brendan did of running into the back of the two car. The problem with those saves as great as they are is you know the odds run out over time. Right. You, know, you need to get a car like that working a little bit better. Brian doesn't have a lot of choice with 15 to go but to get it to the finish. But you can see even right there off the corner, Jeff, there's just very little security in that race car. But, you know, that's all he can do is keep driving it hard. I mean, you just got to push it to his limit. Obviously, he feels pretty comfortable. He knows what he's doing. And, you know, just keep driving it. Two championship contenders, Chris Buescher, the points leader, and Ty Dillon now trying to get by Chris. Just going to get blocked in behind a lap car. Try to make it three wide. It's tight right here, leaving the trial with three wide. Ty Dillon, the 23-year-old out of Welcome, North Carolina, able to get by. Chris Busher, Ty's brother, Austin, on the left side of your screen. Race leader. Has almost a two-second lead over Eric Jones. And now just 13 laps remain. I'm surprised Ty was able to get by Chris. Chris has 10 lap newer tires. Chris had passed Ty and sort of driven away from him. Then it stalled out and Ty made a big run on him and has actually gotten back by him. So that surprised me a little bit. It makes me wonder if Busher doesn't have some sort of a problem. Well, at this point, Ty Dillon's biggest fan is going to be Regan Smith and Chase Elliott because while they hate to see a competitor gain on them. Regan Smith, he's rooting for the three to pass the 60. Now their biggest, they're rooting for the six. They want him to get by the 60 because every car that passes Chris Buescher is costing him another point. Darrell Wallace Jr. Now just 12 laps to go. Yeah, so I know some people are thinking right now with their teammates, yeah. he's not going to try to pass him. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I think between these two, they, every time they get near each other, they right. race each other hard. So. Darrell's going to be doing everything he can to get by Chris. And how about this view, though? When you look at Chris Busher, how free that car is. It's just the back of the car just looks really unsettled, Jeff. Like, you can't really commit to the throttle, can't commit to the steering wheel. I really noticed down here at one and two when he ran the top. We've seen these teammates not play well on the track. You saw another big bobble there by Chris Busher. Yeah, you lose getting in the corner, that's no fun. I mean, that'll get your attention. It's hard to control it when you get free getting in the corner. So, Chris, without a doubt, he has his hands full right now. Both running at high line. David looks as though the six is closing the gap on Chris Busher. And it's a better run than Daryl might have thought he would have at the beginning of the race. And in fact, before the race, I talked to him. I said, was that momentum you had your first career top five in Xfinity in May? Uh, how will that work out for your day? He goes, man, that was in the day. He said, I don't know what to expect here at night. And it has been a struggle. But by the end of the day, they have the six car much better and now challenging his teammate. Under 10 laps remain from Charlotte. Quite an eventful day for Austin Dillon already. Trying to close it out. As Darrell Wallace Jr. trying to catch up to Chris Buescher. Eric Jones, another impressive run. But more than likely, Eric Jones will be disappointed in the outcome tonight if he's not able to close that gap. After starting third with two wins already on the season, Eric Jones hasn't been able to catch up to Austin Dillon, who 
since the last restart he's been able to check out now almost two and a half seconds separating one and two. I just get the feeling that Austin is starting to become a, a much better race car driver. He's, he's won Xfinity races. He's won truck races. You see it on Sundays. He's starting to run really well in the cup cars. That's come back down into here. Now he's won, you know, in position to win several races this year in the Xfinity Series. So he's starting to really, starting to really see what Austin's about. I mean, I've been really impressed with what he's done in the cup car for the last two months. They haven't necessarily gotten the finishes. they got to find a way to get the finishes. But the speed has picked up a great deal. Brennan Poole just moments ago with an issue. Right along with him. Quite a ways up against the wall. Yeah, it was forcing him to come into pit road. It's been a rough night for the 42 for sure. 21st, four laps down. Closing in on the final five laps for Austin Dillon, Marty. And Rick, to Jeff's point a moment ago about Austin Dillon, no doubt they have been fast all season long. But starting last weekend at Dover, Austin will be in the 33 car for the rest of the season, every week. And Jeff, that's key, isn't it? Because when you build that chemistry, and he and Danny Sockman already have terrific chemistry, but being in the car every week, week after week, certainly helps the driver and the team. Because even though they've worked together for years, that familiarity every week certainly helps put you up in front, doesn't it? I think it does, and I, as you said, that Marty, they, they've been very successful together. They've worked together before. They've won races. They've done a really good job working together, won championships. So, yeah, I think even these two together is the right thing to do. And I think this program helps this cup program. I think that, you know, for a young driver, I think the more you can race, the better. So every chance that Austin can race, I think you ought to be racing because I think ultimately that helps the cup program as well. Austin Dillon, who won here in May earlier after starting on the pole. All four of his mile and a half wins have come from starting on the pole. Tonight he was out front to start this race, but his closest competition, Kyle Busch, after Kyle was out front for 102 laps, had issues with the 88 of Casey Kane. The two got into the wall. The 54 went to the garage and hasn't come back out. The 88 of Casey Kane did come back out, but hasn't been able to contest for even a top five position. As we see Brennan Poole, better tires on that 42. He's going to be able to get back by, but Brennan Poole already four laps down. Under two laps to go, though for the 33 of Austin Dillon. Down the back stretch. Has run a very impressive race. That's the key, Rick. That's why we race. The 54 perhaps had the fastest car at a point. You have to manage it. You have to manage it for all 200 laps. Five flag, five flag, one more here. One more time around for Austin Dillon as the white flag has come out. 2.7 second lead, 2.7. Andy Houston, his spotter, lets him know the gap between he and Eric Jones as he goes into three and four for the final time, looking for his sixth career win in the Xfinity Series, a champion of this series, and get the brooms out because a season sweep for Austin Dillon. He'll win at Charlotte. referencing the sweep. Eric Jones coming home second. Brad Keselowski is third. Daniel Suarez fourth. Regan Smith out dueling his job, points job, competitors buddy. for the championship. Regan Smith finishing fifth. Ty Dillon sixth. Chris Busher finishing seventh. Chase Elliott, only one behind him in the championship hunt, finished ninth tonight. Austin Dillon will now have 
the opportunity to try to sweep the weekend. Potentially to get his first Cup Series win right here at his home track. Last time Austin Dillon won an Xfinity race was Daytona in July. And if you remember the next day in Daytona, he got up into the fence, probably one of the more graphic accidents we've seen in quite some time, but was able to walk away from that. Now the celebration once again for Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon has a trademark slide. He does the belly slide through the grass. We'll see if he's able to accomplish it once again. And stay tuned because it doesn't always go well. Some, sometimes paint on grass makes it a little sticky. We have had a little bit of rain in the area over the last week or so. We'll see if that affects the slide. Maybe he should keep the helmet on. Well, especially after how the day started. When he was standing on pit road and the fireworks were shooting above him, one of them came down and almost hit him. He'll grab the checkered flag. Here we go. Oh, no. There's, we've we've changed the slide to a roll. Less opportunity for injury, you land and tumble. And that was smart. Austin Dillon, an established athlete as a young man, actually played in the Little League World Series. So Austin Dillon capping off an incredible day in the Xfinity Series. It started with fireworks, got a little too close, and it ends with fireworks with him on the racetrack winning. We'll see him in victory lane next. Austin Dillon has made it to victory lane. So has Marty Snyder. Let's go there now. Well, as a spotter, Andy Houston said, this is one place you no doubt haven't figured out. Austin Dillon with a season sweep at Charlotte. And a little celebration to go along with it. All right. Let's talk about that restart. You had to do that in May, too. You dominated that race, restarted fourth then, came to get the lead. Today, you had to restart third. How'd you get that lead around two other guys? Well, they did the same thing to me in the spring race from third and uh, went under me. And I had the perfect line right there and ran wide open for about a lap or two to get the lead. And then it was a good battle with Eric. He was pretty close and uh, we're pretty loose that whole last run, but it uh, worked out for our Ram Chevy. We were good enough to win the race. How did you guys make the car better? Because immediately from the drop of the green flag, you went backwards. Danny did a great job. Big adjustments from the first two runs. I mean, we went, went back to fifth or sixth there. Second restart was good. 
got all the way up to third, and, and I knew where our lap times were comparable to leaders, just need to get that track position back. The caution came out and was perfect for us. So, man, I want to thank God, the good Lord above. Uh, he's given me some awesome race cars this year, and, um, man, it, it, what a year. It's been awesome. The day ended with fireworks in victory lane, but it began with fireworks, too. On your, on your backside, your suit got burnt. I was actually praying, and then fireworks hit me in the back, and uh, – I didn't know if it was a sign from God or what, but he got me going right there by a firework in the butt. <laughs> I gotta ask you about the slide. Have we reinvented the slide, or was it is it now the tumble? What are we doing? I don't know, man. I uh, I was kind of worried it was gonna be wet, so I just shoulder first and rolled, and I, maybe it looked cool. I don't know. Considering how good your cup car is, that might not have been a bad idea. Yeah, uh, I think we've got a really good Dow Chevrolet. Uh, we're gonna do our best tomorrow to do the same thing we did tonight. Austin Dillon, season sweep here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Kelly. Another top 10 finish for the championship points leader, Chris Buescher. It seemed like really the only misstep was the incident on pit road that cost you a handful of positions. Talk about the end of the race as you're trying to chase down a couple of the guys who are trying to chase you in the championship. Well, the good thing is we gained a couple points, so there, uh, there is that. But, you know, our, our guys have done a really nice job, and, and this is by far the best best car I've had here at Charlotte. So I'm really proud of them for that. Our Zest Mustang had a lot of speed. We we should have been a top five car, and, and you know everyone's human, and, and things happen, and you know I made mistakes out there too, so I can't I can't be hard on them. It's uh, everyone's human, so we're we're gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna try and try and work on a couple things, and you know that's uh, that's not a bad bad day for us at all. I mean we're we're right there with them. We're following them around the track. We if we had a couple more laps, we could have uh, we could have gotten them back there, but it's, uh, it's the end of the race. It was it was a lot of fun. It was uh, frustrating at times. Uh. You've made no secret that this isn't your favorite place to race, but after what you had a really solid car, do you think you'll have a different feeling next time around? I've already told Scott he's making me like this place a little more. So he, even after today, I mean, that was it was fun. We we had a lot of speed in the car. We were able to move around a little bit. Uh, I, I had a good time. So yeah, I, I like Charlotte a little bit better now. All right, another good point state for our championship leader, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I like Charlotte a little bit better now. Chris Busher, championship points leader by 26 over Chase Elliott. In racing, sometimes we'll say the best car doesn't always win. Austin Dillon had a very good car, but the best car today probably was the 54 of Kyle Busch. But the incident between Kyle Busch and Casey Kane put the 54 in the garage. Mike Massaro was able to catch up with Casey Kane moments ago. Casey Kane led 34 laps on Friday night, but a damaged race car is what he ended up with, finishing 12th. And uh, the signature moment, I guess, of the night was uh, the contact with the 54. What happened? Yeah, we had a had a good, great clip Chevrolet. I was uh, Kyle got mad because he got into it with his teammate off turn two on the start, and it shuffled him back to where I was. So then I'm racing to try to get by him. He's up, down on me in the corner, so I'm up against him on the straightaways, just doing normal stuff. And then he starts beating on me down the back and then the front, and. Uh, and then I overdrove turn three and got into him. But it was, uh, I don't know, know why he started beating on me other than he was, I think it kind of used him up just a little bit and then got away from him off turn two. You don't expect anything like this to carry over into the Cup Series on Saturday night, do you? I would hope not. I don't know why uh, he would want to have that battle. I mean, he's, what, he wrecked me five times, I think, a couple years ago, you know, and put me in a bad position for those two years when he was doing that. So, yeah, I don't think he wants that battle on, uh, on Sundays. Not with a championship uh, on the line. Uh, Casey Kane finishing 12th in Charlotte. Well, Casey Kane referenced it. Uh, we can show it to you, actually. The fact that the two have had history, and tonight the contact or the contact happened early and actually often between the two after that restart when the 54 shuffled back. Let's go back to 2013, and we'll go to the Cup Series, the Daytona 500, 18 hook in the five. The Talladega into the wall. How about Darlington? And from last year, there's Pocono. So there is a history there, guys. Yeah, you heard Casey. I mean, he he, he had the number. You know, he remembers it. He, 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 five times one year is what he was. You know, what he just said. So. When two drivers get together, you know, you don't normally see the same guys getting together that many times in one year. So, obviously, it looked like to me, you know, Casey felt like you know, that, that Kyle had run into the side of him and he drove into turn three. He said he overdrove it. He did overdrive it. I think he overdrove it on purpose. And, uh, you know, we'll see if this carries into Sunday. Well, and I think it's it's 
Kyle Busch is the one who has the most to lose. So whether he feels Casey was responsible or not, I think it's it's up to these two to have a conversation before they get in their cars tomorrow night because uh, Casey Kane's right. Kyle Busch is in the chase. He has the most points to lose. I think it would be uh, the, in best interest for Kyle Busch for him to reach out and at least clear the air before they strap in tomorrow night. Daniel Suarez, we've mentioned it's only a matter of time before he gets his first win. Tonight he gets a top five finish, finishes fourth. Dave? It was a strong run for Daniel, and Daniel, the weekend didn't start strong for you. Tell us how you got to this point after Friday, or after yesterday. That's that's a good team. That's that's what I call a really good team because uh, yesterday when we when we unload the car of the hauler to to go out, you know, for the first practice. I, I just feel like we didn't have the speed. Actually, I did one lap and I came right back. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I'm very proud of everyone in Jockey Racing. Uh, all my team, uh, our Ari, Sierra Camry, was strong. We make improvements every single time during the first practice, second practice, qualified, and during the race. In the beginning of the race, I, I, I didn't feel like we have the speed. Uh, we were just too tight. I didn't have the speed. Uh, every single stop, we make the car better and better. Actually, in one point, we, we went a little bit too far and then we came back. But overall, uh, happy, happy with the performance, happy with the way that we came back. Uh, and I'm very thankful with all the support, like I said, from Jogging Racing, Aris, uh, all my friends from from uh, from Mexico, uh, Telcel, Telmex. Um, I think that, that we are getting stronger and stronger. And obviously, to Xfinity, to put a great, great series together. Um, Man, I hope we can get one. I think we're getting closer. We, we just need to keep working. Yeah, we've said that. You're getting closer. It's getting much better. Tell us, though, the thing that we saw that was most obvious to us that was unusual this weekend was when Kyle got into your race car. How much of a benefit was it for Kyle to get into your car and practice and give some feedback? Honestly, I think it's one of the first time in, in, in a few months that we, we started the first practice that off of everyone else. So we were making adjustments and we were not improving. Uh, we were improving, but very, very slow, very baby steps. And and Kyle was strong. Uh, I have very, very good relationship with him. He's been super helpful to me all year long. Uh, and uh, and we had this conversation before that I was I was wonder why I mean what exactly is the difference between you know an experienced driver and a rookie driver. So. So yesterday we had opportunity, and uh, as always, he, he was very helpful. Uh, I think our information was close, uh, but at least I feel like we, we all we gained some confidence, and we, we started moving with more confidence to the right direction. Yep. Between the veteran and the rookie, I'd say they bridged a big gap there, Mike. Another top 10 for Chase Elliott, and uh, considering how practice went, uh, I would imagine you're pretty pleased with the top 10. I mean, you got a lot out of that race car today. What was the night like? I was... I uh, just kind of fought a lot of different things, mainly front turn, just, uh, I don't know, we were just really off all weekend, so could have been a lot worse, I guess, so we'll, uh, you know, take it and move on and try to get a win here before too long. All right, so now we look at the big picture, four races to go, 26 points back. How do you look at the championship situation right now? Same way I've looked at it all year, you got to go win, I mean, it's the same old deal, I, don't, I mean, it's the same, I'm going to give you the same answer every week. So you're going to have to go win a race. You're going to have to win multiple races probably, uh, at least one, and run inside the top five every week. And that's just what you're going to have to do, take it or leave it. So uh, no ifs, ands, or buts, no, no reason to cut it short. It's what's going to have to happen. Let's go over to Dave Burns. Eric Jones finishes second on the night, and that lap 147 restart looked like you were going to take your opportunity, and then Austin came back by. Describe for us what was going on there. Yeah, I... Uh I thought we had it on that one, but uh, he just got a really good run and um, down the back stretch, and I tried to get him back down the front stretch and just couldn't quite clear him into one. And unfortunately, that was um, that was kind of the, the rest of the race for us after that. But you know, overall, a good day for us. We ran up front. Um, you know, second place is never fun, but uh, it's it's nice to know that we were as fast as we were, and it's nice to get this GameStop Camry. Uh, thanks, Paul Rains, everybody at GameStop, Toyota, Ed Lockus, Bob Carter, and. Just, uh, just fun to be here. I uh, love it. Thanks for Xfinity for sponsoring the series and uh, NASCAR and all the fans. So excited for my next one uh, over in Texas. And I got to ask you, what is it with you and this program in the Xfinity series on mile and a half tracks, Eric? It's, it's been great. Yeah, yeah, it has. It seems like every time we get to go to a mile and a half, we're uh, we're always strong. And you know, that's kind of a, a product of JGR. I think they've always been, uh, you know, pretty fast on a mile and a half stuff. And I was fortunate enough to step in the seat and learn as I go and figure some stuff out. Um, and try to get better and better at the mile and a half. But just kind of clicked for me, uh, you know, right away, really, uh, on the mile and a half stuff. It's just something I enjoy and something that kind of uh, felt natural to me. And I, I really love uh, when we get to come to him. So we get to race a couple more this year. I'd say he's learned it well. And he'll definitely be 
running for the wins at those next mile and a half that he runs in. Austin Dillon with the win. Sweeps the season at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the Xfinity Series. Eric Jones, Brad Keselowski, Daniel Suarez, Regan Smith, the top five. They see Chris Buescher there in seventh doing what he needs to do to protect that points lead with only four races to go leaving here. Brian Scott, Ryan Sieg on the lead lap as well as Ryan Reed finishing 11th. Tough night for Brennan Poole. John West Townley got into the wall. Kyle Busch will finish 31st. Championship point standings and implications after this race, the 29th of the season with only four to go. Chris Buescher has a 26-point lead over Chase Elliott. Regan Smith, 34 back. Ty Dillon, 38 back. Again, four races. You can only make up a point for every position. And Regan Smith, the highest finisher of these championship contenders. Dave caught up with him just moments ago. Regan Smith follows up his win last week with a top five. Sounds like you guys are, looks like you guys are making the right moves at the right time in the season, Regan. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... It's tough because we, we battled hard all night long and, and should be happy with the fifth place, but we want more than that. You know, we're, uh, we're a pretty determined little race team right now. So Jason and, and Alan up on the pit box worked their butts off tonight. That was, you know, we weren't very good at the beginning. And if you told me we were going to finish fifth, I'd have, I'd have probably hugged you and jumped up and down at the start of the race. So to be disappointed with it is good. Um, I'm proud of the fight, proud of the battle to, to get back up there, and, and we're going to keep working hard. Wanted to get another win so I could drink some Dale's Pile since they were on the race car tonight, but uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to skip that tonight and uh, save it for another day. Describe how hard they did work. What was the car like at the beginning, and how many changes did they make, and, and how good was it at the end? It was a handful at the beginning. Uh, we were just extremely tight and, and bouncing all over the racetrack. I, I don't even know everything they did. I know they took some pretty big swings at the car, and you know at that point, I don't need to ask. I just need to try and relay information to them. and. Uh, uh, whatever they did on the last stop, they got it to as close as it had been all night long. So that's good. If you're gonna if you're gonna get it close to right, do it at the end so you can make up as much as you can. And uh, you know, two points at a time isn't gonna get us there, but we can try keeping the, the pressure on them and you know see if he makes some mistakes more. Whole team effort tonight by the seven team. Celebration continues for Austin Dillon and the team. It'll have to wrap up though because Austin Dillon starts 14th tomorrow night in the Cup race, the NASCAR Sprint Cup playoffs. Continue tomorrow in the chase for the Sprint Cup. Bank of America 500 coverage begins live on NBC at 7 p.m. Eastern. Coming up next on NBCSN, it's Mecham Auctions from Chicago. Rough racing, disappointing night for Kyle Busch, but celebration for Austin Dillon as he completes the season sweep and the roll, the tumble. The winner in Charlotte, Austin Dillon. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.